Good morning again. It's Michael Lipinski, um, 4-5-2020, 7-13 a.m. And we're going to continue right along with our building information modeling Revit tutorial. Um, we're, we've discussed building content a little bit and inserting uh, instances of uh, families that we found online, if you remember. Um, so we kind of went out of sequence a little bit with those uh, nurses' um, screens and that, um, that space tutorial, but it was prudent only because of the crisis. I thought that would probably be a good exercise for folks to see because that's what's going on right now as we speak. So uh, not to dwell on that, uh, we do have to move on despite the, uh, the crisis. So what we're going to do is, uh, now that we've covered a little bit on building content, we're going to get into working with views. Now, this chapter isn't as thorough as it needs to be, but it touches on some of the rudimentary or fundamentals of the view representation of the software. There's a lot to this particular aspect of it, uh, and we're going to go into that. We're going to go into that. Now, um, that being said, working with views. Views are the means by which you will interact with, perceive, and document the project. As you can see in the Revit organizational chart shown previously, there are both 2D and 3D views. Right? We talked about that. This would be a 3D view on a sheet, and then obviously this would be a 2D view. Right? This would be a two-dimensional view of the model. All right, so we, we, we obviously know what that is. So um, two-dimensional views are orientated to specific coordinates, such as plan, elevation, and section. Schedules and material takeoffs are yet another way of viewing information in a project that is neither 2D nor 3D. Three-dimensional views are either orthographic or perspective, camera view, in nature. Views also have type and instance parameters that control properties such as name scale, detail level, phase filter, and graphic display options. We will review each type of view again in more detail in Part 5 documentation. Reviewing the common properties of views. For, let's first review in detail some of the properties that apply to most views. All of these are found in the properties palette when no objects are selected. Some properties may also be accessed in the view control bar. But we talked about that earlier. Let's take another look at it. So let's get out of this sheet for a second. And let's go to the site. And you'll notice this is this floor plan. What they're saying is a lot of the view properties are available in the properties palette of the view. Now, if, you're, if you've selected something in the model, you'll see the properties of what is selected. But if you click out of there or hit escape and you default to being in the, in the view, you'll see the properties of that view will, will pop up. And as you can see, there's a lot to this. There's lots of controlling the display representation of this particular view. Now, that being said, what we need to do is discuss uh, how we, how we uh, manipulate these views and, and their parameters to give us the display representations that are required or that we want, because there are lots of different display resolutions. I mean, I'll just give you a real quick example. But, you know, this is a typical floor plan, and it's showing, um, it's showing a lot of information, as you can see. Um, and, and that's important because, you know, there's lots of different display resolutions that you may uh, be required to, uh, to convey. And, and these are the types of things that I wanted to show you, uh, that it's a little more, uh, it's a little more to it. You can, and it's, it's much more intuitive uh, when, you, when, you, when you start really getting into it. So um, this is a commercial template, an architectural commercial template of a, a typical office, a typical small office. And uh, this is what we were going to use to, um, to continue on with, uh, with, our, with our instruction because there's a lot to get to. There's a lot to get to. All right, so again, these properties of these views um, may also be accessed in the view control bar like we discussed earlier. This is the view control bar. This is the view control bar. Now, the most common view properties are as follows. 
crop region. Now, if you see here, you have extents, crop view, crop region visible, annotation crop, view range, associated level, scope box, depth clipping. Very, very important that we discuss on all of this. With the exception of schedules and drafting views, the extents of all views can be limited using crop regions. The visibility of the crop region itself can be turned off, but you can choose to hide all crop regions in the print setup dialog box when using the print command. Although you may you may feel the need to keep crop regions visible to allow easier editing, you can use the reveal hidden elements tool in the view control bar to temporarily show hidden crop regions. Buttons to enable, disable, and show slash hide the crop region are available in the view control bar. So what they're saying is show crop region. As you'll see, this is the crop region. So as you can see, you can manipulate this. Well, you could turn it off and temporarily see it, is what they're saying. So now, buttons to enable, disable, and show high crop regions are available in the view control bar. And that's exactly what I just showed you. So, show crop region. Do not show, do not crop view. You see how when I showed the crop region, I don't show the crop region. When I crop the view, and I don't crop the view. Now, what are you noticing here? What are you noticing? Do you see this elevation? It's outside the crop region. So when I actually turn on crop view, you don't see it because it's outside the crop region. And there it is again. And that's important because if you print, you're not going to see the salvation symbol. So that's just one of the things that that paragraph was trying to explain to you. Now, view scale is obvious. View scale, anyone who's worked with CAD, who knows anything about it, anyone who's worked at SALT, engineering or architecture, knows, um, knows about uh, scale factor. And we're not going to get into the mathematics or the ratios at this time. But I will uh, in a private instruction. But now, right here, you'll, you'll notice if you hover over it, this is the scale at which this particular view is at. Now, that can be confusing for some viewers. It can be confusing for some viewers. Because what you're expecting to see is that when I change this, you're expecting to see this do this. And in essence, it is. But that's where annotations play a big part of this. Um, it's going to remain static in this view. The annotations are what we're going to have to scale. Because these are going to go on sheets, and, and then that's where their view will be, will be scared, uh, scaled accordingly. We're going to get to that. But the view scale is the proportional system used to represent components of measured drawings. The scale of the view not only controls its printed size, but also automatically controls the relative weight of line work, as well as the size of annotations, such as text dimensions and tags. The view scale is displayed on and can be modified from the view control bar. So let's just take a look. Eighth of an inch scale. Eighth of an inch equals one foot, or one ninety-sixth of the paper size because there are 96 eighths of an inch and a foot. There are 48 quarters of an inch and a foot. So you, you're technically shrinking it 1 48th times the paper size. That's the underlying mathematical ratio concept of this. I can't get into that. If you don't know that, you're going to have to practice that. It's a ratio. So, again, it's at eighth inch. So at what it's at eighth inch. So what it's saying is, if I drew eighth inch text, if eighth inch equals a foot, the text will be twelve inches, right? If I drew a quarter inch text at eighth inch scale, the text would be twenty four inches. Do you understand the inverse proportion there? 
Therein lies the bipolar disorder, if you have it. That's the ratio of the scale factor. So if anyone's following along, that's how that works. So if I change this to quarter-inch text, you'll notice that the size of the text will change as per the scale factor setting. Now, well, you can research that on your own. Now, let's leave it as it was, shall we? Let's leave it at eight inch scale. All right, so now, that's a pretty quick overview of the view scale. And that, that is a heads and shoulders above the AutoCAD um, style uh, system that's employed um, with the annotation uh, the tools that you could use. Very, there's lots of dialogue boxes. You have to do a lot of data mining, um, a lot of data mining in CAD to get it to the way you want. And then, you know, you set your standards, and the next thing you know, um, you're down the road, you're trying to implement it somewhere else, and someone else has another set of standards, and then you find out, if you're savvy enough to realize, that the collective bunch of you are all working with the antiquated platform in the first place. So I, I'm going to probably have to get banged up a little bit more you know, around the industry, because I'm going to have to go into these offices, and they're still, collectively, as an industry in some instances, they're still insisting that they refuse to conform. So I have to deal with that when I go to these jobs, just to be able to put food on the table. I've got I to gotta, I gotta mind my manners, button my lip, and just shush. Because their jobs are on the line when that happens, all of them. You can't just go into a firm and say, this is the, real, the right way to be doing it, because they'll all want you out because they know their, their answers are on the line. So you have, to keep, you have to treat these overzealous managers with kid gloves. Just a little tidbit of advice if you're going to sneak in through the back door, because you're going to see a lot of incompetencies. In any event, let's move on. Visibility graphics is the core concept of what we're discussing in this chapter. And that's important because, again, getting to display the way you want is important. You can have everyone telling you line weights and colors and layers and all that, and that's going to just confuse the shit out of you because this has been designed to alleviate all that. Lots of ways to control light waves. Lots of ways to control light waves. Lots of ways. Fiber jockeys. That's what they call these guys. Fiber fags. Com fairies. These are com fairies that do this. Competitive local exchange carriers. These fucking people are very competitive. They're, it's cutthroat. This industry is cutthroat. Very cutthroat. All right. Now, that being said, if this is not for you, stay home and play with your kids. Uh, because that's what I'm trying to do. All right, so now, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, that. Now, let's move on to the visibility graphics, because this is very, very important. Visibility, the visibility graphics overrides dialog box allows overrides of views, elements, in two essential ways. Visibility, turn object categories on or off, and graphics. Customize line thickness, color, and fill pattern. Now, let's open that up for a second. Now, in this level one floor plan view, if we look at the properties of the view, there's a lot to absorb. But if we go down to identity data, you'll see right off the bat, I want to bring this to your attention first, that uh, there's view templates available to you. Displays the name of the template used to create the current view. A view template is a collection of view properties, such as view, scale, discipline, detail level, and visibility settings. Use view templates to apply standard settings to views. View templates can help to ensure adherence to office standards and achieve consistency across construction document sets. Now, we're going to have to get into that because that alleviates a lot of the burden. And this is more for a binge, man uh, a binge. <laughs> a bin, bin manager's role uh, or a consultant's role. Um, to, 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 to prepare um, and distribute these things. And they're not free of charge. Obviously not. Setting up a, a company's office standards isn't free. But in any event, this is more, it's a little more advanced, the view templates. We're going to get into that. It's very important. I don't want to get on, go off on a tangent yet because the, the rudimentary basic fundamentals of what we're going to have to discuss because there's a lot to view, re uh, view, resibility, uh, view visibility. And... That's why I want to take it a little slower than, than, I, than I, I have been, because we've been running a mile a minute. I know I have. My family's, you know, we're on the edge. We're on the cutting edge. We got a lot of, I got a lot of kids. 
Plus, my sister's got a lot of kids. My two sisters. It's a, it's a nightmare. So the only, I think the only choice I have is to find a way to make more space. That's, that's my goal in life. I've got to figure out a way to make more space. Now, keeping our social distancing, I guess you could say. How do you do that? You develop space between. So the space between you and I, very thin. They say in Atlantic City, you got to cut it thin to win. So that's a whole other story. All right, so I know you're getting bored. You don't like it when I, when I do that, so I'll stop. All right, so now visibility graphics. Now look, in the properties palette, you'll notice visibility graphic overrides. Now in the view tab, you'll notice in the graphics panel, there just so happens to be that same button. But if you look here, this is over. This is an override for this view. This is the visibility graphic overrides for floor plan one. You see, I could have accessed this tool from either here or here. Now these are the visibility graph. This is the visibility graphic dialog box, and there is a lot to this. There's a lot to this. This can be very, very difficult for people to comprehend. Now, just to digest this for a second. This isn't insurmountable. It's just a bit complicated. Uh, as you can see, there are tabs within this dialog box that allow you to manipulate the display of objects, not only within the view, but in different categories. So as to make it easier for you. Because as I told you before, you can be working with linked models. So, and imported categories. So you have to be able to control those. And that's where individual discipline responsibilities and collaboration comes in to play, because you all want to be speaking the same language. So as you can see, there's lots of different, uh, lots of different avenues we can expl explore uh, down this particular um, avenue. And you know, these are the types of things that we need to be discussing. So as you can see, you know, I don't have the structure uh, link loaded. And we're going to get into the rest of this, but I don't have the structural link loaded. But you're going to be able to control the display, the display uh, representation of your links uh, or, over, or allow them to be displayed the way they were um, meant to be displayed. Now, we're going to get into all that. Visibility graphics is a huge aspect of this. This is what's going to allow you to become the creme de la creme in the industry only because you're going to leave so many people behind. There are going to be so many people that are going to be called from the industry because of this. It's just um, facts of life. Technology does that. It robotics. <laughs> That's what it does. Go to a stop and shop in Bayonne. They were, there's, a, there's a robot cleaning the place. Walks around, talks, stays out of your way. It minds its own business. But that's, so, that's someone's job. That was a job. Not anymore. Anyway. Anyway, and his name is Marty, as a matter of fact. You go meet him. He's, or she is down at Stop and Shop in Bayonne on Lafonte Way. Walks around. Runs the show. All right, now I'm not going to get silly. This isn't a uh, Orson Welles War of the World scenario. <laughs> I don't think. All right, so, again, we are going to get into this in later chapters uh, because it's very, very important. But you know me. You know me. I'm one of those guys. I want to I wanna give you a quick preview. So I'm just going to grab a template here. And if you notice here, I have some templates available to me, some view templates. Now, I have a limited amount. I have a limited amount. But there's lots of them. I only have a limited amount. As you can see, the MEP templates aren't, aren't loaded in here. I don't have any good MEP templates. Uh, not in this particular project. But it's pretty much architectural. But you'll see there's an architectural um, elevation view template. All of these parameters and, 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 and values, if you look, the, this is the same box, dialog box, that you would open up if you tried to manually override this display. <laughs> that might not be the good way to go. You would be doing it a lot. And that will slow you down considerably. That's why if you configure your templates ahead of time, or if you have a project template that's set up, it becomes a lot easier because then it's second nature and becomes an extension of your creativity. So, again, you can see there are many, 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 um, many, many uh, view templates. Now, 
some of these are configured, and you'll notice that when I apply this different view template, the view parameters and the view display properties are going to change based on this based on the settings in this view template. And there's a hierarchy. The view template is going to override anything, um, any view uh, representation that's already been assigned to this. And as you can see, this view doesn't have a template assigned to it. It's been configured manually. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to apply that view template to it. You notice a few different things happen. Very subtle, very subtle. But you'll notice that, indeed, the display representation did change. Now, we can't get into that just yet. I'll confuse you. Because they only, they only touch on it in this chapter. Uh, but this is, in, this is a, a very, very long chapter. They don't spend nearly enough time on it. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to in later chapters because we're going to have to. Um, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. And practice makes perfect. So I mean, in, the, in the lecture lab environment, this is a little easier. It's a little more frustrating because I, I, some, I tend to be able to do it a little faster than some of the less experienced designers. Um, and that gets frustrating to them. So I, I'm cognizant of that. And uh, I have made attempts to uh, try to slow down a little bit, as you can see. But again, we have to meet somewhere in the middle. I, I, I can't slow down forever. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that due diligence is important. Quality assurance is important. You can't, you can't just jerry-rig it. Other words for that. All right. All right. So now, again, I know I'm beating a dead horse with this. But it's important. And I would suggest that in the time that you have, you may Google some uh, or Vimeo some, uh, some, some, some videos, query Revit display representation, Revit visibility graphics. You know, these words that you see, this nomenclature, you have to look up the words and read what these are. If you haven't already, you're going to need to study. You need to study in order to do this. That's what I've been doing. You know, that's what I've been doing. I know a lot of folks, I, I kind of, well, there's a little ambiguity in my Facebook and online social media platforms. But again, it's only so that you understand, you know, that your eyes, you know, your eyes are at work here. They're at work. You're at, your eyes are at work. And you don't want to play boggle all day. Bug eyes. So there's a little more to this. So that's why, you know, health plays an important factor of this. You're, you're, you're in a cubicle all day, 8, 10, 12 hours, you know, 10, 20 years, no exercise, no, um, no interaction. You almost become, you know, the boy in the plastic bubble, in the box. You have to think outside the box where you get sucked into the graphical user interface yourself. So if you don't get up and walk away from your desk and stretch and, and all those things, then you're, you're going to find that you're going to burn out. There's a lot of information, and you can burn out. I burnt out so many times. I've had to replace my head gasket over and over and over again. I have blew my gasket more times than I can count. But luckily, you know, there are institutions that make sure you don't do that. All right, so detail level. The detail level parameter can be set to one of three predefined choices. Course medium, or fine. A representation for each setting is defined during the component's construction and sets the level of detail in each view. It can help improve model performance and avoid cluttered views by limiting the visibility of smaller modeled model elements. Detail level can be set with a button on the view control bar. Uh, what that means, for those of you that uh, may not know, is that the detail level is located here in the view control bar. And right now it's set to course. So what it's saying is that you can't, I can't set this. See how it's grayed out? And the reason is, is because I applied a view template to it. So if you see in the view, if the, in the view properties, I, I, I overrode the view control bar, and none of these options are available to me because it's being controlled by the, the view template. So I've instructed students in the past, let's just get rid of that for a second. Let's put it on none. Put it on none. <laughs> the flying none. And let's now see that it's available to us again. And you'll notice something subtle. Let's take a look at the wall, for example. Let's take a look at this wall and this window. Now, 
when I change the view from coarse And Dell, Dell Architecture is trying to do this. They, they're doing it ass backwards too. They, they, that was a perfect example. If I, if I had to do a case study of an architectural firm that is still uh, lagging behind, Dow Architecture would be a very good example of that. We can't get into that case study, but if someday, maybe I can, I can do that. In any event, there, that's coarse. There's medium. And there's fine. Now, and that dictates what you're going to see in your elements, in your elements. It's especially, here's a perfect example, a single duplex receptacle on a, on, a, on, a, on a wall. The detail level, coarse, medium, fine, as you pick them in plan, <laughs> it'll be shown as a, as a single gang or two gang box, 1900 box, uh, or, or in course, it'll be shown as a duplex symbol. So, those are the types of things that I'm talking about. Because um, the level of detail is important, LOD, level of detail is important. It's a compliance requirement. Level of detail, the higher the level of detail, the more they're going to expect from you from the model. If you work with the United States government, any go uh, United States governmental agency, they're going to require a, a bit more discipline and a, a, di a bit more level of detail because of the, the capabilities of this platform to link into process controls, <coughs> system controls. In any event, we're not going to get into that just yet. We're going to, but not, not just yet. We're going to stick to the program. Um, we're going to relax as best as we can. Again, I told you, I have six months left. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, hoping that this has some reach and it'll return dividends down the road. Uh, I just need a steady source. <sighs> 60,000 isn't going to work. 70,000 isn't going to work. 80,000 works. 100 will work much better. 100,000 would work much better. If I can ride it out to retirement on 100 grand a year, I'm not looking for much more than that. That would be fine for me. I'm not a greedy man. I'm not a greedy man. But I'm sure shit not going to be working for Mexican money. I refuse. I'm not working for Mexican money. No offense to the Beaners. It's not my forte. Anyway. So. View templates. View templates are a, selected, a selection of view properties which can include properties that change the scale, detail, and visibility of objects in the view. As an aid to standardization, view templates can help you organize common view settings and apply them to groups of views throughout your project and other projects within your office or firm. View templates are covered in detail in Chapter 4. A very important aspect of that is that if you start messing around with the view templates, any view that has that template applied to is going to change. So I know that when I first started doing this, one of my drawbacks was that every view I was, I was applying a template to it, changing the template, going back to a different view where I wanted to see a different display representation, and then I realized, oh, wait a second, I'm changing the template, which is changing the display representation on all the views that are using the display representation. It took a few uh, long nights for me to punch myself in the head and say, knucklehead, what are you doing? And you'll find that you're going to stumble through all that stuff as well if you're in a newbie like I was. Um, but again, there are levels in Revit, and I am nowhere near the creme de la creme, but I am rising to the top as opposed to falling by the wayside, because if you want to spend the rest of your days wayside engineering for LK Comstock, for the MTA deep below the caverns like an animal, <laughs> then go for it. I'm not doing clipboards for the rest of my life. I'd rather be above the ground. I'm not a subsurface engineer anymore. I'm tired of that work. I'm not dying. You send the rest of those electricians down there. The local free needs to have a, 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 a... We need a private labor agreement. That's what we need. Either you stick with the collective bargaining agreement and share it, because you're not, or we come and come to an agreement that we're going to have a private labor agreement. Because it's apparent to me, this, collecting, this collective bargaining agreement tends to go where it wants to go. And I'm 50. <laughs> I'm 51 at this point. 
And I'm, you know, union true and true. But at some point, someone over there at the joint board has got to ease the fucking purse strings, okay? Let's, let's put some semantics aside. I've been through every shop in that fucking union. 98% of them don't know how to do this. All right? A couple of them do. And I'm not going to name names. But somebody better get their head out of their ass over there. I'm losing my patience with them. Local 3 as a whole. I'm not even going to get into Local 164. I only know a couple of them, and those two fucking guys are assholes. <laughs> local 164, full of assholes. Local 3, full of cheap Jews. <laughs> That's all I'll fucking say. Don't get me started. I'm trying to be a professional. But I'm broke. Some of them are to cough up some fucking money over there. I'm paying my dues. Show me the fucking money. The view template. You're looking at it. Creating duplicating views. You can create views in various ways in order to work with your project and manage it, meet your needs. Although creating views is quick and easy, you should avoid populating your project file with too many unnecessary views. An overabundance of unusual views will increase the account of management your team will need for the project's organization. Views that do not have a specific purpose, and I've seen a lot of them, are just another object to maintain. Search through and store. Keep it simple, stupid, and see how to control their extents after they're created. New views can be generated from the Create panel on the View tab of the ribbon, and the process is quite simple. Click one of the buttons, and a new view is activated and stored in the project browser. We're going to do that. I don't have an axe to grind, but it's knocking on my head. I should be making a lot more. I should have a million dollars in my B fund, and I don't. I'm on the BA charter. I don't have a million dollars in my B fund, but I should. Because to date, I haven't seen many general foremen sitting in front of the computer doing this. So I should have a million dollars in my B fund, but I don't. I should be over scale, but I'm not. I'm angry a little, but I'll be okay. In any event, I'm digressing. Maybe I should look at my bipolar video again to make sure um, I, I'm not having delusions of grandeur or flights of fancy. Or I feel like hurting someone or someone else. Oh, you motherfuckers. <laughs> the, the work that I do for you, too. In any event, creating views. All right, so let's take a look at that. Before I, um, you know, remember how mad I am at half the local three members that I've, meet, I've met. All right, now, view. We're in the view control, but we're in the, the view tab. And within the view ribbon, you'll notice there's a lot going on. There are a lot of panels. Obviously, select that we've discussed a little bit. Graphics, presentation, create, sheet composition, windows, and then the user interface. Now, there's a lot going on here. So we'll take one step at a time. They're saying you can create a new view, right? They're saying creates 2D plan views, such as a structural plan, floor plan, reflective ceiling plan, um, plan region, or area plan. You can copy and paste the plan region into existing views. Area plans show spatial relationships based on area schemes and levels in the model. So now we can do that uh, if, 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 if you want. We could do that. Let's just read a little more. Uh, another quick way to create new views is to right-click a view name in the properties browser and select one of the duplicate view commands. You can also duplicate the current view by using the duplicate view button in the create panel of the ribbon. So what I'm saying is you can come over here, right mouse click, and you can duplicate this view. Now you can duplicate it, duplicate it with detailing, duplicate it as dependent, um, and that makes a big difference. We'll get into that. If you don't want to bring all of these dimensions over, you, uh, you may not want to. Uh, and if you don't want it to be parametrically uh, related to it, yeah, you'll be able to, to see how this may help you. Now, um, we'll explain all that, or I'm going to explain all that right now. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, there are three choices in the duplicate view flyout command. And again, for those of uh, any newbie, that's a flyout. As you can see in the figure, there are three choices in the duplicate view flyout command. Duplicate, duplicate with detailing, and duplicate as dependent. Let's take a quick look at what each of these options means. Duplicate. This command will create a copy of the selected view, but will not replicate any of the annotations in the view. Use this command, I had it upside down. Use this command when you need a fresh copy of a view in which you will create a new annotation from a different documentation purpose or even a working view without clutter. 
Joints can't be too busy or you're going to get sick. If the joints are too busy, you're going to have a brain cramp. You have a brain fart. They can't be too busy because they, they're going to hurt. It hurts your eyeballs. They can't be too busy. Duplicate with detailing. As its name suggests, this command will create a copy of the selected view with all the annotation in the view. We don't recommend using this command too often because replicated annotation is often a sign of inefficient production process. Duplicate as a dependent. This command allows you to create a series of partial views that assume the properties of one parent view. Using dependent views does not mean you can have a parent view with a larger scale like 1 to 100 and then create a dependent views at larger scales such as 1 to, uh, one is to one fifth, uh, one is to 50. The parent view has all the same properties as the dependents, but you can manage the crop regions and settings from the parent view. This is mo used most commonly with large plans and elevations that not fit on the project standard sheet size. Think about that. This is where match lines come in. Um, and, and, and in large, uh, not in large sections, but this is where match lines come in to a certain extent. Um, and we're going to have to dive into this because um, this is something that um, we may or may not use, but we're going to have to cover it. It'll be, it'll be discussed later. Um, but let's move on before we get bogged down in that. Um, oops. So, um, again, that was, the, uh, that was a little bit on that on um, duplicating views. Now creating floor plans and ceiling plans. Now as you can see, you know, the project browser, you know, you have it broken down or in an architectural tree, a network tree that, or a network architecture tree um, that has ceiling plans as well. As you see, there are certain things on a ceiling plan that you may or may not, you know, want to see. And notice the display representation of some of the items and the elements are different in the ceiling plan. And we're going to get to one of the most hardest aspects of this, and that, my friend, has a lot to do with the view range. And the view range is a very important aspect of this. You're going to have to think in dimension. Even though you're looking at a floor plan, in your brain, you're going to have to wrap your mind around the concept that when you're going down in plan, you're going to the negative z-axis. And when you're going up in plan, you're going to the positive z-axis because you're looking into the floor plan in depth. And you're, you're looking at it in a scope. And you're turning your scope and zooming in and out. But in plan, you have to understand something. The plan, you're looking at it volumetrically. Even though you're looking at it in 2D, you have to understand the depth. You have to understand the depth. Or you're going to be flipping back and forth between 3D, elevation, and plan. And that's why all these windows, uh, having tiled views helps. But there are people that can draw it in 3D and never leave the 2D isoplane. Draw in the XY plane and they never have to change their perspective. They know to slope down. They know to slope up. They know to roll and slope. And it ain't easy because this is a precision instrument. But technically, you really don't have to leave 2D to draw in 3D. And there's a big misconception in the industry. I've had people come to me and say, yeah, this job's only 2D. And they want me to draw it in 2D. And I'm like, well, I'm thinking to myself, well, listen, man, I am drawing it in 2D. I'm just not letting you see what I'm doing. I'm really drawing it in 3D and displaying it in 2D. But they get so confused. No, 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 this job's only 2D. I'm thinking to myself, no, you're absolutely wrong. It's 3D. You can only see in 2D. They're blind as bats. Some of these PMs and engineers, they don't get it. Don't be intimidated by their prowess. Don't be intimidated by their intellectual prowess, their status, and their, their, their lot in life. Some of them, regardless of their stature and their wealth, they don't get it. <laughs> and, and, and that's good in, in a certain extent. It's good that they don't. You know what that means to the savvy investor? Think about that. There are people in positions of power with lots and lots of money. They're having problems with this. And they don't know what to do. They're hiring people coming off the streets. But you got to remember how you came up, how your path, your learning path to rabbit. You're going to have strengths and weaknesses on this path. You have to draw on all your experience that you've ever learned because this is advanced stuff. So you're going to have to say, okay, well, 
You have to draw on experiences that you had when you were a kid. I still have to watch Schoolhouse Rock to motivate myself, to remember, you know, this is a sum of all of its parts, the vector sum of phase angles. This is the sum of your efforts, everything you put in to date. And at some point, you demand, you demand a return on your time investment. And I'm approaching that time. I'm getting a little pissed off about it. I'm not the manager that yells. I'm not that kind of manager. I ain't. I'm not. But when it comes to frustration in this particular business, that's what happens to most of them. They, their jobs are on the line, and, and they are going to get on their knees for that GC. They'll get on their knees for their owner. And those owners are going to put the pressure on them, and it's going to, and it's going to roll downhill, and it's going to come right to your desk. And if you ain't prepared for that, you're going to be the one holding the shitty end of the stick because you have to produce. Without you, the BIM operator, nothing gets done. Nothing gets done. You're the end-all, be-all. Without you, that building ain't going up. That valve ain't being made. That pump isn't being designed. It's a powerful platform. You can open doors for yourself or close them. And we'd have to see how far it takes me because I'm, I'm in it. I'm, I'm all in. You know, I'm all in. I'm all in. But this, this exercise, I'll be honest with you, I'm only doing these videos. I'm not looking for anything other to, to enhance my community because I plan on staying in Bayonne. I like working in the city, but I'm tired of moving around. I've been all over God's creation. You know, I know I'm digressing, but again, this is an interactive educational assessment. If anyone's watching this, you know, I'm doing this. I'm not getting paid for this. So, again, um, my, my thought process is if I can reach as far as I can, maybe, maybe, um, tangentially, tangentially. I can see a return on my investment. And the reason being is because, again, collaborating and collusion is a fine line between collaboration and collusion. Those probably are the, the first two words you should look up before you start this. I already have done that. Collaboration and versus collusion is a very fine line. All right, now, view range. There's a lot to discuss here. There's a lot to discuss here. For those seasoned BIM users, or anyone that's taken my class before, you know we discussed this, and you know you had troubles with it. Um, I still have troubles with it. This is a very complicated aspect because you're looking straight down at plan, but you've got to remember there are other levels of your eyeball. You've got to be thinking with your eyeball in depth, lots of different fashions. So I'm, le I'm leaving this box open, and I'm talking, so I'm going to give you some time to read it. You know, and if you don't have the software and if you don't have the book, you'll get a better idea of what's going on with this um, limited slip differential microscopic thing that we're using. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, it resembles a microscope. And uh, we're squeegee all at the same time. It's, it's, uh, it's ironic to a certain extent, you know, going through an organic process when you really realize what's going through the graphical user's inter interface. You know, we're, we're riding the light, man. And it burns. All right, someday I'll rest. In any event, I'm going to keep going. So as you can see, you're going to, you, these are cut planes, and, 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 and elements will display differently uh, based on their location, um, their uh, z-elevation, uh, and whatever other variables you want to assign to them. For example, in a ceiling plan, again, you wouldn't see the countertops. You wouldn't see the countertops. And there are AIA standards of how these lines, elements, are supposed to be represented. And in CAD, it's a nightmare. Uh, blocks and attributes and uh, layers. And, and I just, again, I, I hate to say Dow, but they had a kid over there, and the owner, this, between the three of them, you know, the four of them, you know, they, uh, they, 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 they wouldn't get, they didn't want to change what they had going. They had a good thing going. They were comfortable with it, and I'm not going to drag them through the mud. But again, you know, if you rest on your laurels, you'll find... You're going you're gonna to rest on your laurels. All right, so this is a very, very important aspect of it. Um, and again, we're not going to get into all this, but uh, let me tell you, this is no joke. This is no joke. All right, so I'm just going to cancel out of this for a second because I don't want to confuse you just yet. But again, display representation plays an important part of this. Um, because there's so much to convey in a short period of time, you have to find ways to do that, and that is the study of architecture. It's not the study of buildings. It's Study of space and time. How much time do we have to get this done? So these construction schedules are really important. The design schedules. 
And, and these folks with these Gantt charts, they have, they, they've got it all figured out, how much time it's going to take to do this, how much time it's going to take to do that. But as I discussed earlier, if you, these timetables are no longer valid. So if you put in the time early in the model, you're going to find, you're going to return dividends and save on the back end. Um, but a lot of folks, a lot of firms, no, 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 no. we don't need that. We don't need that. They're going to find they do. You'll see. It's just how it is. It's just how life is. It's trending. It's trending. It's trending this way. All right. So uh, we talked about creating and duplicating the views, creating floor plans and ceiling plans. As you learned in the section, creating and duplicating levels, early in this chapter, when you create a level in an elevation or section view, you have the option to create a plan view for that level in the options bar. If you have levels without corresponding plan views, you can also use the plan views tool from the room to create a plan view. So basically what that's saying is um, you can create them, you know, up here if you want. You can create a plan view. I can create a plan view, uh, a stair. Now, it's not going to duplicate a view. If there's already a view created for a level or... or Anything in the project, it's not going to create, it's not going to duplicate it. Because if you look, if I toggle this button on and off, there's a view already created, a floor plan for level one, two, three, four roof, um, but not, and, and street level, but not stair roof high and stair roof low. So let's just do that. Now, what type of floor plan is it going to be? We can edit the type, and this is a system family floor plan, right? Now, View template assigned to new views, right? This is where you could now, before you even create it, you can assign a view template to it. But look, it's a system family floor plan, but I only have architectural plan view templates. So maybe it's something I wouldn't do right this. So maybe I duplicate it and do something else. But I'm just going to create it, and then you'll see. Hold on. So now if we go to floor plans, you'll see stair roof high. Now, if you go to elevation, oops, elevations, you'll see, well, the stairs extend up to the, uh, the roof, right? Up to the, uh, maybe the mechanical room, up to a parapet area, up to a uh, steel support, dunnage, whatever. It, it, the stairs extend up to the roof. In any event, well, that's what we just did. We, we created a floor plan for that. Now, this is where the view depth becomes, uh, it becomes, it plays into this. Because we didn't assign any, any um, view table to it, but there is a, a associated view range. I really don't want to get to this, but it is the next, it is the next subject. So let's just keep our, ourselves um, focused here. I'm going to keep the view range open while I read this. Notice what you can see on that. You don't see the roof parapet, right? And you want to know it's construction. You see the stair profile, if you will, but you don't see the roof parapet. You don't see anything else. So it, if, you, if you look, this view range, if you, I want you to look at this while I read. I'm not going to discuss this. I want, I'm going to read it, and you look at this and see if you can make sense of what I'm saying. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. I'm going to take off my headphones for a second. I'm going to go find my lighter. I'm going to light a cigarette. So just look at that for a second. I'm going to take a break. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully everyone stayed in tune. The view range properties can be difficult to understand, so we created a diagram to illustrate the principles. You will see that the primary range is the zone you usually see in a default floor or ceiling plan. If an object crosses the cut plane, the object's cut values are used. If the object is below the cut plane, but above the bottom, the object's projection values are used. Cut and projection values can be found in visibility graphics. Okay. And what that's saying is that if an object falls within the primary range top, okay, if it falls between this range, it'll be displayed that way. Or if it's cut by this line, 
number one. It'll be displayed that way. Okay, what is that? All what does all that mean? So like, if I cancel that, and I go to visibility graphics, and you can see. Let's take a look at something simple. Let's take a look at something that we could we can manipulate. Now, projection surface, hidden lines, electrical equipment. Now I can override that so that it displays uh, differently. I could change the line type. Uh, and again, you'll have to be thinking of the scale at which you're drawing because these spaces between these dotted lines are important. So we're not going to get into that. But you can change the color of the line. You can change the weight. We well, can leave it as is. Because you'll see that these variables you can't change. The cut projections and the cut patterns. Certain ones you can. Certain ones you can. It's curtain systems. How they display and plan. You'll notice that you can override their display representation. I'm going to read it again. The view range properties can be difficult to understand, so we created a diagram. To illustrate the principles, you will see that the primary range is the zone you usually see in the de of default floor plan. If an object crosses the cut plane, the object's cut values are used. If the object is below the cut plane, but below the bottom, the object's projection values are used. Cut and projection values can be found in visibility graphics. Cut and projection values. This is how you're going to manipulate your display representation so you can see what you want. So, again, it's a lot of information, but it's not insurmountable. It's not insurmountable. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate this to you. Now, again, all we see, all we see is the top of the, the stair roof. But let's just get this so that we can get it in front of the view. And let's take a look at the, the view depth. The view depth is number six. Number six is the view depth. Now, what it's saying, view depth, is the associated level. Stair roof high, right? Well, st that level, stair roof high, if we look at it in elevation, stair roof high is at 60 feet, right? It's at 60 feet. So all we're seeing is from here to here above 60 feet. If we go to the view, this is all we're seeing. We're only seeing this much of what's going on. So let's, let's manipulate it with the view range. I'm going to just do a, a real quick, simple just, uh, manipulation of it by saying to make it unlimited, looking down unlimited. And you'll see now, I can see all the way down to the ground and below. But you don't need to see that on this plan. But I wanted to show you that. Um, and if you're ex-referencing and doing all that crap, even in Project Navigator in AutoCAD MEP, it's not as good. I tried. I, I thought the AutoCAD MEP architecture or uh, AutoCAD architecture in AutoCAD MEP was the solution for me. No, even that. It's, it's good. I used it at Kennedy. I used it at Kennedy Airport. And it was fantastic. It works great. I could do it again and again and again. If I have to, I will, using AutoCAD MEP. But after I did it, I said to myself, you know what? I should have listened to Ed Medwin. I should have just used it. I should have did it in Revit. I mean, he gave me the chalk. I mean, they get, Kennedy Airport gave me the chalk. I didn't, it wasn't hard. I just had to, the only hard part about it when I was working with ADCO over at, uh, um, at Kennedy were the assholes. If there was nobody there and I could have just did it online, I would have done better. It was just all the static that I had to listen to of dudes, especially the PMs. I just didn't know what the fuck was going on. And all they do is talk and talk and talk and talk. If they just shut their fucking mouths, we could have did it faster. In any event, <laughs> the project executive, what a fucking idiot. Holy shit, where'd you find him? In any event, <laughs> can you get swack, they would say. No, I can't. <laughs> and neither can you. <laughs> In any event, <laughs> you're not getting secure worker access, consultorium access either. If I ain't getting it, you ain't getting it. In any event, <laughs> don't get me started. <coughs> they want to play snakes.
All right, so uh, view range properties, like we discussed. For most views, the bottom and, and the bottom and view depth parameters are set to the same plane. <laughs> that can be confusing. And I'm not, I see this is the thing. I, I can't go around trying to trick people. If I wanted to do that, I could take up the world's oldest profession, <laughs> which I'm not going to do because I won't earn much money from it. If it was that easy, I wouldn't have to worry about Reddit. I just sell my ass on the street, but I wouldn't make much. In any event. I don't have the luxury of the world's oldest profession. I have to do it the manual method. All right, so not to attempt to be a comedian and not to diminish anyone's um, occupation. There's lots of money in that. In any event, these cut and projection values are important because that's what's going to control your display resolution. If you're going to sit here trying to edit lines all the time because you want something to display as hidden, you're going to spend a lot of time being hidden. <sighs> So I don't want to get into all that because it's just too much for you to absorb. So I'm going to keep going. We, we do have some more to get through, but we, we're going to have to go back and discuss all this because it is not easy. This view range um, is important to, to master. You're, you're going to need to master this. You're going to need to. Um, so again, I'm just going to put it to level below, and now all you see is roof levels roof. And now you can see what's up there. If we look at this in 3D, you'll see that now you can see you can see all of this. You can see all of this in that view. If we tile the views, let me close in active. Let me go up to the uh, stairs high roof. Let's tile these views. Let's ZA. I'm sorry. Let's ZA. Z. Is it ZA? ZE? There it is. Whatever it is. All right. So I use the shortcut key, which I don't do. But now, as you can see, what we're actually seeing, we're seeing the top of the stair uh, up on the roof. We're seeing the parapet, and we're seeing this cantilevered overhang uh, for this curtain wall system. I think it's a no. It's a series of columns and 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 windows. But again, this could be a curtain wall system. So in any event, you can see how much of this model you can actually see in plan. I think I just moved something. No, I didn't. In any event. Um, that's the, the power of the visibility uh, um, display parameters that, that you could utilize in this. And see the time you could save. Anybody just use AutoCAD. Um, and we, we have, as a collective group in Local 3, been using it. But you see what Five Star is doing. They're sending them 30 at a time for this training. ADCO isn't. You know, I think uh, Hellman is. And again, I don't know if Hugo Kane may be. I don't know if Petroselli's doing it. I don't know who the fuck's doing it. I just know that they're doing it. But I'm, I, in the field, you know, it's all, these, it's all these kids coming from college that just are disconnected from the construction process. So they're coming up from different... They're coming up as electricians. They're coming up as college kids. They're coming up... That's it. That's all you're getting. You're getting field guys coming up, and you're getting college guys and girls coming up. And they're meeting at a learning curve. They're meeting in a learning curve, and, and they're hanging out together. And that's about all they're doing, and unless they're savvy firms. Unless they're savvy firms, and they're putting in uh, shunts. They're putting in shunts along the way. Any electrician who's worked their salt would know what a shunt is. But again, I'm not an electrician. I'm not an electrician, nor do I profess to be. I can't bend conduit with a hand bender. I can only use the computer. <laughs> Hold on a second. <clears throat> oh, my back hurts. All right, in any event, uh, we talked a little bit about the view range, blah, 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 this is important. Cuttable elements that cross the cut plane will be displayed according to the cut properties of the element's object style. Elements between in this range will be displayed according to the projection properties of the element st uh, object style. So I'm going to bring this back up to you again because I want to beat this into your head. I want to drill this into your head. What it's saying is that anything, cuttable elements, cuttable elements that cross this plane, the plane number one, the primary range top. <laughs> range. It's an oven, man. Cuttable em elements that cross this plane will be displayed according to the cut properties. Of the elements object style elements in this range 
will be displayed according to the projection properties of the element's object style within this range. Any artillery expert would know what range means. Again, it's, these words have many connotations. Range finding. <laughs> I'm not in the military either, but I used to hunt. In any event, all right, now, it's in this range between one and two, between the primary cut, between the primary, primary range cut plane and the primary range top. So it'll, the object will be displayed by its projection properties. And that goes for the, the view depth in the other direction. Um, elements, um, display of elements in this range is overridden with beyond, with beyond line style. So anything below the bottom or number three, the primary range bottom, display of elements in this range is overridden with beyond line style. So, and that's what they're saying in the visibility graphics. In the visibility graphics. You're seeing these projections and these overrides. You're seeing the ability to manipulate them. Now, your company may have standards. They, and, and depending on how they configure them, um, they're going to uh, be different. But the industry is moving with this Kobe and with the cloud-based collaboration between firms, we're all speaking the same language. And I know I uploaded a, a ton to Kennedy I, in CAD. I don't necessarily think I would ever need to use another template for terminals in airports other than the template I created for Kennedy Airport. It was set up perfect in AutoCAD MEP. That's as far as I'm going to go. I'll just use that one and tweak it. I already have a, t a template for airports, two of them. In AutoCAD MEP, there's absolutely no reason why I need to go back to that software platform unless they make me. Uh, but I don't have a, a Ken, an airport template for Revit yet. I'm working on that one. Um, in any event, I digress. For most views, the bottom and view depth parameters, let me go back to the view uh, range dialog box. This is a long video. I'm beating a dead horse. Hopefully some of this hits home. Hopefully I have some reach with this. All right, let's go back to the view range. For most views, the bottom and view depth parameters are set to the same plane. The bottom and view depth. Number three. Number three. Associa the bottom and view depth are changed or are, are the same plane. That's usually what the case is. So if you're at level one, the view depth, or number three, is set coplanar with level one. That's the concept. Uh, you can lower it, is what it's saying. And anyone who does underground conduit work would know that is a good idea because you do have to show sub-slab conduits and you do have to show subsurface conduits. Subsurface everything. If you have a subsurface vault, you may want to set your projection lines or your view depth to display lines at a different line type below ground. It doesn't go without saying. Now, in AutoCAD, lots of ways to do that. But you're going to get yourself confused. On large projects... You need to expeditiously do this the correct way or your project's going to hemorrhage cash. It's going to hemorrhage cash. And anyone who has stuck in coordination in a room will know it gets heated. I don't want to move this. I don't want to move that. You're saying move it. You don't know the ramifications of moving it. When you say, I'm going to move this, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. That's why these general contractors and their BIM coordinators, um, they're, they're in bed with the contractors. They are in bed with them. And they prefer the ones that can do this the best. Because I've got my walking papers before. And I didn't, I didn't hold any knock on the tent because I got my walking papers because I just wasn't that good. That was the bottom line. I lost jobs because I wasn't proficient enough. Not because I was an asshole. I just wasn't good at it. And then I got angry and frustrated. That's what this software will do to you. You just won't be able to be as good at it. And you're going to lose your job because of that. That's how it goes. I don't, I, don't, I don't sympathize with you if that's the case. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to go through it. Trial by fire. 30-day trial. That's all you get. You get a month. You get a month. Because the software is free for 30 days. Now, I'll give you a month. If, you don't, if you're not producing in a month, I'm sorry, but you're going to get your check. And I'm not going to be the one that signs it. The super's going to. Because <laughs> I'm going to rat you out. <laughs> In any event, 
<coughs> I, don't, I don't sign checks. I don't handle money. I don't handle money. I'm not signing your check. I'm signing your pink slip. That's my goal in life. Again, for most views, the bottom and view depth parameters are set to the same place, the same plane. They're coplanar. They're colliding. They're, they're coplanar. They're coincident. It just so happens to be that they are there at the same time, in the same place. That's what that means. It also means, therefore, objects below the button, the bottom of the view range, rather, simply won't appear. So what happens if you need to show objects on a lower terrace for reference in the current view? When you set view depth to level below or unlimited, objects that are below the bottom of the view range but within the view depth will be overridden with the be online style. Perhaps you only need to apply a different view range setting to isolate areas of a view. This can be accomplished with the use of the plan region tool. You can find this tool in the create panel of the view tab along with the other plan view tools. The plan region tool allows you to sketch a boundary within which the view range dialog box will be available to make specific changes. You can use this method for areas such as windows that might be placed in a wall above the cut plane but need to be shown on the plane for documentation. Ooh, that's complicated. I may have to read that again. But I think we're going to hold that thought because I'm running out of disk space. Um, and we're going to have to talk about creating elevations next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video. And I'm going to uh, read that chapter, uh, that paragraph once again. I'm going to prepare it. And I'm going to come back with another video. You're more than welcome to stay tuned. Uh, yesterday was my day off, so I just decided to play color forms. Today I'm going to actually try to do some design and not play color forms. I, I really actually do like to play color forms and listen to music. I mean, that's also a hobby of mine. Um, I don't know if you see my Facebook page, but it's obvious. I've got a lot on my mind. I like to play color forms. It's just something I've been doing since I've been in preschool. Um, I like to read comic books. I like to do everything I like to do that when I did when I was a child because I plan on enjoying my retirement and not, you know, go out on workman's comp and bleed and bleed Social Security. In any event, I'm going to end it here. They don't want to give me Social Security anyway. They refuse to, they, if you're nuts, then why do you keep making money, they keep telling me. So I just walk out of all of these uh, disability determination hearings and just say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'll wait till I'm 64. I have the patience of a saint. God help you. And you know who you are. Anyone who try to fuck me, if I see you again, you know who you are. Don't try to take food off my fucking table.